So it's worth looking at just why these men felt so hard, uh, hard done by. Now, the American army at this time was 8 million men strong. But of these 8 million men, 4.5 million had never left the United States of America. And most had never fought. Over half of the British army had, by this stage, never fired a shot. Despite all of this, however, despite their reluctance to go, despite the fact that their commanders were reluctant to send them, that they themselves were reluctant to go, these men would rise to the challenge. And thank God for us that they did. And they really did respond as the heroes that they were. Now, apprehension before they landed on the beaches was high. The German army remained formidable. Failure would cause, well, could cause a collapse in civilian morale and fatally undermine the Western Allies in the eyes of Stalin, maybe leading to a Third World War. If the Russians had got the idea that we were militarily weak, which a failure of the D-Day landings might well have given them, then they'd certainly have been less reluctant to press on and dominate all of Europe. And so it was vital that we showed the Russians that we were strong enough to protect the freedoms of Western Europe. The Western Allies, however, are also fatally short of infantry units available for the fighting. Now, even in 1945, the Americans, British and Canadians could muster only 80 divisions in the West to fight 60 German divisions. And so, because so many British and American forces are being kept at home, those in the, in the, in the fighting areas actually do not have the, the numerical superiority that they would wish. So to make up for the lack of numbers, the British and Americans would have to use air power, artillery and armour to make up for their lack of numbers. Now, firstly, vitally, you had to persuade the Germans that the British and Americans were going to land elsewhere. They couldn't be allowed to know where the British and Americans were going to hit the beaches. And so Operation Fortitude convinced the Germans that the invasion would be in the Pas de Calais reason. Even for weeks after the D-Day landings, it was convinced that the D-Day landings were just a feint for a much larger invasion elsewhere. Now, the landings were due to take place on the 5th of June, but were delayed in the hopes of better weather. But on the 5th of June, one British and two American paratroop divisions were dropped into Normandy. And on the 6th, the landings began at dawn. And it was the greatest combined operation in history. 5,300 ships, 150,000 men, 1,500 tanks, all supported by 12,000 aircraft. Now, if we go from, start to look at some of the beaches, I have here from Juno Beach, the words of a Canadian sergeant. I, thought I saw the first tank come ashore, and the Germans started opening up with machine gun bullets. But when we came to a halt on the beach, it was only then that they realised that we were a tank. When we pulled our canvas skirt down, the flotation gear, then they saw that we were Shermans. Now, might sound odd, how could they not know, the Germans not know that it, it was a tank that was being landed? Well, the British and Canadians had, thanks to a, a British major called Major Hobart, what they called Hobart's Funnies, a, a series of specialised vehicles, including the floating tanks or swimming tanks. They couldn't be used for very great lengths of uh, time. They could only cover short distances. They couldn't go into too deep a water. But they were tanks with canvas bags on the top of them so that they could wade through uh, a short distance of coastline. And obviously, until the canvas screens had dropped, the Germans didn't imagine that it was a tank. I have here from Sword Beach the words of Private Jim Cartwright. As soon as I hit the beach, I wanted to get away from the water. I went across that beach like a hare. On the other hand, I turned to one of the American beaches, Utah. The Americans took Utah Beach with only light losses. We have here the words of an American private. You know, it was kind of dumb, but it was just like an exercise. We waded ashore like kids in a crocodile and up the beach. A couple of shells came over, but nowhere near us. I think I even felt somehow disappointed, a, a little let down. The other American beach, however, Omaha, was 
very, very different, and is why it's known as Bloody Omaha. The Americans suffered very heavy losses, with over 800 dead. It was going so badly that they considered evacuating the beach and pulling their men off and abandoning the efforts to land at Omaha. I have here the words of an American private. There were men crying with fear, men defecating themselves. I lay there with some others, too petrified to move. No one was doing anything except lie there. It was like mass paralysis. I couldn't see an officer. At one point, something hit me in the arm. I thought I'd taken a bullet. It was someone else's hand, taken clean off by something. It was all too much. For half the morning, the beach landing there hung on the edge of failure before small groups of American rangers worked their way up the bluffs above the sea, slowly overwhelming the defences. And I have here the words from a German. If this letter was found on a German soldier's corpse, and it's worth remembering, therefore, that the person who wrote this died that day, presumably soon after writing this letter. On the morning of the 6th of June, we saw the full might of the English and Americans. At sea, close inshore, the fleet was drawn up, limitless ships, small and great, assembled as if on parade, a grandiose spectacle. No one who did not see it would have believed it. The whistle of the shells and the shattering explosions around us created a vast kind of a vast and terrible kind of music. Our unit suffered terribly. You and the children will be glad I survived. Only a tiny, tiny handful of our company remains. And of course, tragically for him, his wife and his uh, his children, he, he wouldn't survive the day. Late in the afternoon, the German 21st Panzer Division counter-attacked towards the beaches. But by then, it was far too late and it was halted by British anti-tank units and Sherman Fireflies with their 17-pounder guns. By nightfall, the British, Canadians and American forces had pushed between one and a half and three miles inshore for the loss of some 3,000 dead. Now began the battle of the build-up. By D-Day plus one, 300,000 British, American, Canadian and other free forces would be ashore. Less than three weeks later, the Soviet army would launch what they call Operation Vagration, and what they know as the destruction of the German army in the east. The race for Berlin was now on.